Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. Just because you find yourself in the valley of the shadow of death, you need not fear because God is with you and it may take a while for you to get the right result, but there is no way that God will not come through and deliver you at the right time if you don't give up and quit. in the paths of righteousness and to grow, we have to do new things. We have to be willing to change. And here's a little sheep fact. They will stay in the same pasture forever if the shepherd doesn't move them. <laughs> Matter of fact, they will wear out the pasture. They will destroy the pasture and it and them will get infected with parasites. They need to be moved regularly in order to be healthy. Deuteronomy 1.6, thus says the Lord, you have dwelt long enough on this mountain. Come on, some of you have been dancing around the same stinking problem. You've had the same bad attitude for the last 20 years. You've been mad at the same person for the last five years. You've had the same chip on your shoulder since you were 20 years old. And it's time to move on. It's time, yes, you, you're made right with God through your faith in Christ, but now it's time to shine a little brighter. The path of the righteous shines brighter and brighter. Can I tell you something? Jesus is the hope of the world, but people are not going to see Jesus if they don't see him through his people. <laughs> Wherever God has got you, whatever neighborhood, whatever job, whatever school, whatever church, you are strategically placed by God for a purpose. And your purpose is to shine. Come on. Well, I just don't know what God wants me to do. I don't know what my call is. Shine. Go to work and smile. And when people ask you why you're so happy all the time, tell them because I know Jesus. I've always got hope. My circumstances may not always be what I want them to be, but he's my helper. Change always requires new challenges. God wants us to follow him and move when he says move and stay when he says stay. Sometimes we want to stay and God says move and sometimes we want to move and God says stay. And we don't have time to go there right now, but in Numbers chapter 9, we have a great example of when the cloud covered the tabernacle, when the Israelites were traveling through the wilderness They were led by a cloud during the day and fire by night. And if you read Numbers 9, 17 through 22, it's, they're just really beautiful scriptures because it basically says that sometimes the cloud stayed a day and then it moved and they had to move and sometimes it stayed overnight and sometimes it stayed several days. And so they never knew when God was going to move, but when God moved, they needed to move. Now, how can you tell when God is finished with something? There's nothing that makes you more miserable than to keep holding on to something that God got done with a long time ago. <laughs> Are you prone to stay in the same place until it becomes a rut? Do you feel like you're stuck in a rut you can't get out of? Do you need something new, but you're either too lazy to move or too fearful to move? When the place where you're at is no longer giving you maximum benefit, you need to move You need to change. <laughs> you know what? I hope that my television program, my teaching, my books and CDs, I hope they help you forever. But you know what? If you ever get to the point where I'm not helping you anymore and you've got all you can get from me, then please go listen to somebody else because the most important thing is that you grow. 
that you grow brighter and brighter. And, and you know, different people get different things from different people. Some people couldn't stand the way that I preach, and then others, the only way they're ever going to get anything is for, to hear from somebody like me who kind of like is straightforward and in your face. But some people couldn't take that. I mean, I'd make them mad in five minutes, and they'd be ready to just throw me to the dogs or something. <laughs> Have you been in a job for years that's a rut, a grave with no ends? Do you need a new pasture? <laughs> Are you in a church where you're no longer growing spiritually? <laughs> wow, you guys got really quiet. <laughs> now, I'm all for commitment. And as long as you can grow, you need to stay somewhere and be faithful. I don't care if you're there 100 years, but you need to ask yourself, am I changing? Am I growing? Am I serving or am I just going in and taking up space on a pew every week, warming the seat, going home, going back, going home, going back, going home, and nothing has changed in me in the last 20 years. I've still got the same dumb problems I had 20 years ago. Then something is wrong either with you or the place. <laughs> Well, do what you want to with it. Are your friends causing you to become sharper and better? Are they a good influence on you? Or do you need a fresh pasture of friends to graze in? <laughs> Man, I'm telling you what, the people that you hang out with sometimes can make you or break you. Wow, I want to get around somebody that's got some kind of a godly anointing on their life. I don't... Man, get me away from a complainer, a murmurer, a gossiper, somebody who finds fault with everybody else. I just like, I don't want to hear nothing about except just what's wrong everywhere. Just tell me something happy. The path of the righteous, I believe, is being in the right place at the right time doing the right thing. So here's the thing. I can be doing the right thing, but if I'm doing it in the wrong place, it becomes the wrong thing for me. I was in a church, I worked at a church for five years, and that was where my public ministry began. There were five wonderful years and also growing years that were painful for me. I learned a lot about how to come under authority and just a lot of things I won't go into, but God started dealing with me that he was finished with me there. And, you know, it's really painful when God gets finished and you're not finished yet. And so I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't go. I felt like God wanted me to step out and start my own ministry. Not that I was just trying to be some rebellious woman trying to have my own thing. I really just felt like that God wanted me to have a broader area, a broader platform than what I was ever going to be able to have there because I worked for somebody else and needed to help them fulfill their vision. And had lots of confirmation but just didn't move. Didn't want to hurt anybody's feelings. Didn't want people to think that I was rebellious. Didn't want them, want them to think I was full of myself. Didn't want to get out and fail and make a fool out of myself. There was all kinds of reasons. And one night I was sitting in the front row in my second seat over from the aisle where I sat every Sunday morning for two services and every Tuesday night because I was on the leadership team and so we were at all the services. And God hollered at me. I heard very loudly inside, what are you doing here? I thought, well, I'm going to church. That's, that's what I do. And, and the next thing that I felt in my heart was, I don't need you here anymore. I need you somewhere else now. See, it's not about me just being where I would like to be for my benefit. I need to be where God can use me the most. And like I said, I'm, so, you know, man, please, if you're growing and you're serving and then you stay right where you're at, I'm not encouraging anybody to, to leave their church, to leave their job, to get rid of their friends, but I'm asking you to examine the fruit of what you're doing 
and see, are you growing? Is it helping you become all that God wants you to be? And if you do need to do something else, you don't have to do it in a, a nasty, mean, hateful way. I'm still friends with the pastor at the church that I left now some odd 25 years ago, and we still have great relationship. There's a right way to do things and a wrong way to do things. But you know what? If, if I would have stayed for all the wrong reasons, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now. I wouldn't be reaching people all around the world. So I'm just telling you, if God is trying to give you a holy push, then you need to follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit. And sometimes not everybody likes it when you do that, but you're gonna be very sorry if you get to the end of your life and all you can think is, I wonder what would have happened if I would have. So anyway, now I hope I don't get anybody in trouble and you go do a bunch of crazy stuff just to... <laughs> How many of you understand the balance of what I'm trying to, to share with you? So, my journey with God was very, very, in a, uh, very, very interesting, like everybody's is. And I found that life is a never-ending pattern of letting go of and taking hold of. <laughs> letting go and taking hold. I let go of a full-time job to begin to study so I could prepare for ministry, and all I was doing was those home Bible studies when I let go of that job, I thought surely God would really bless us financially and we'd see miracles in our finances. But for six years, we just had to believe God for our socks and underwear and enough money to pay the bills and everything else. So I did the right thing and actually seemed to go backwards before I went forward. Let me tell you, sometimes our commitment is going to be tested. We let go of childhood and we become an adolescent. We let go of adolescence and become an adult. We leave friends and go to college. We leave those friends and go home and get a job. We get married, we leave parents, we have children, we leave freedom behind. <laughs> How many of you didn't miss what I said there? Amen. We take on more responsibility. Our children leave. We have to take hold of a brand new life. And personally, I'm in a place in my life right now where I am having to take hold of some wrinkles that I would prefer not to take hold of. <laughs> How many of you are there? You're having to take hold of a knee that wasn't, doesn't want to do what it used to do anymore, and a, a wrinkle that wasn't there the day before when you looked in the mirror. And so the thing is, is am I going to do things the right way or am I going to do them my way? Am I going to just do what I want to do or am I going to do what God wants me to do? You know, if we always do what God wants us to do, we're always going to have peace. Doing the right thing is an amazing thing. What would happen if we made a commitment tonight, God, from now on, I'm just going to do, with your help, what I really believe in my heart is right. I'm not going to argue about it. I'm not going to make excuses. I just want to very simply do what I believe is the right thing to do. How many of you, how many of you know that if you go shopping and they give you too much change, keeping it is not the right thing to do. How many of you know when you get your groceries that it's not right to leave your grocery cart out in the middle of the parking lot leaned against somebody else's car? Look at how smart you are. How many of you know that it's not right to sit at work and play on the internet when your boss isn't looking? Oh, only about half of you know that. <laughs> well, do I need to rework my message tonight? That's called integrity. Sadly, a lot of people today don't even know what that is. And we have to learn to do what's right because it's right, because it honors and glorifies God when we do what's right, and we have to leave the results to God. You don't always get instant results. Honestly, if the devil sees that you're committed to righteousness, he more than likely is going to find a way to persecute you. But if, you, if you're steadfast, you will ultimately come into a place of reward that is so amazing that you absolutely won't even know how to think about it. You know, listen, I, I, I mean, I look at the hard things that I went through and the friends that I lost and getting asked to leave my church and being made fun of and just all that. I mean, just, it was so painful. But you know what? God is faithful. 
And I'm telling you what, I'm still here and I'm getting to help people and I've got a happy life now. I mean, I am 71 years old and I'm running all over the world. <laughs> I like to tell people how old I am because I want you to see that even though your outer man gets older, your inner man is renewed day by day and you're not too old to do anything great for God. You don't have to get old and feel bad and go sit in a rocking chair somewhere. I need more rest than I used to and I use wisdom, but I'm making a point that the more you serve God with your whole heart and try to really do what's right because it's right, you're gonna see benefits in your life in lots of different ways. Do you know how, how awful it is to always know, have this nagging feeling that you're not doing what you should be doing, but you just keep doing what you shouldn't be doing anyway. I mean, it just sucks the life right out of you. It is wonderful to just know that you're doing the right thing. You know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are a good example of somebody who did the right thing, and it looked like it just turned out sour. I mean, they, they decided that they would rather go into a burning, fiery furnace than to bow down to a wicked, ungodly king. And so they made the right choice. They went into the furnace and their reward was the king turned the furnace up seven times hotter. <laughs> but guess what? If you go and read in the book of Daniel, it's such an amazing story if you're not familiar with it. When the king looked in the furnace and saw the fire and saw the flames, he said, wait a minute. Three men went in the furnace and I see a fourth man in there. And I love this part, they went in bound and they came out loosed. Sometimes it's in the furnace that your greatest bondages are broken off of your life. And so, I mean, it's in those times when I lost all my friends and nobody wanted anything to do with me that I got to really know God. And I love the fact that the Bible says, when they came out, they didn't even smell like smoke. <laughs> he leads me in the paths of righteousness. And yea, though I go through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Just because I'm doing the right thing doesn't mean that I'm not gonna go through difficulty. And it's not something I need to whine about. It's not something I need to get confused about. It's not something I need to remind God how good I am and now I don't understand why this is happening to me. Why me, why me, why me? Well, why not me? You know, I mean, there's all kinds of people going through lots of different things. And if I trust God, I can trust him in the valleys as well as I can on the mountaintops. And I can trust that God's got something good for me, even if it takes place in the furnace. <laughs> Joseph made the right decision when Potiphar's wife tried to seduce him. He said no to maintain his moral standard. Boy, I wish we had more of that today. You don't want me to go there, do you? Wow. And he said, no, I'm not gonna get sexually involved with you. Why? Because he knew it wasn't right. He did it to honor God, period, into the conversation. So she lied about him said that he tried to attack her. Potiphar believed her. And Joseph went to prison for 13 years for something that he didn't do. He did the right thing and spent 13 years in prison. But those years in prison was when God forged him into a, a, a man that he could use. And he went from the pit to the palace and ended up being the number two ruler in all of the land. Daniel in the lion's den. So many great stories. Daniel was a man of integrity and the other 
leaders and people in high positions hated him because he had favor with the king. And you know, even a wicked king will like you if you're a person of integrity. And so they knew that the only way that they would ever trip Daniel up and get him in trouble with the king is if they could make some kind of a law involving his godly commitment that they knew that he wouldn't break because he would honor God. So they got the king to make this rule that for 30 days, anybody who asked any man or any other god or king or ruler for anything other than that king, that they would be cast into the lion's den. Well, Daniel had a habit of praying three times a day with his window open, and he continued to pray three times a day with his window open. I love that the Bible says with his window open. He didn't even say, well, I'm going to keep pray praying, but I'll do it quietly so I don't get caught. And sure enough, he got put in the lion's den. And the king was more bothered about it than he was. And the king stayed awake all night. You know, when you do the wrong thing, you can't sleep. There's no biblical proof that Daniel slept all night in the lion's den, but I've seen pictures of him laying down and having a nap while he's in there with all the lions all around him. And when the king looked in the next morning and saw that he was still alive, he was all excited. Oh, your God has come and saved you. And he said, my God came and shut the lion's mouth and delivered me. So here's the thing. You do the right thing. You get punished for it. But God will come and shut the lion's mouth. He will come and deliver you. I don't know where you're at in your life right now or what kind of decisions you're facing, what kind of moral decisions you're facing, what kind of decisions you're making about compromises you may have to make to keep your job, to keep your friends. Just because you find yourself in the valley of the shadow of death, you need not fear because God is with you and it may take a while for you to get the right result, but there is no way that God will not come through and deliver you at the right time if you don't give up and quit. Well, we all have things in our life that we really want. But you know, I think it's great to get to the point where we can say to God, I want what you want even more than I want what I want because I know that your will is always the best for me. And when we come to that point, then if we hear no from God, we can still see that as a good thing. He is our shepherd and he is a good shepherd. And Psalm 23 is one of the most popular sections of scripture, I think, in the Bible. Even people that don't really know a lot about the Bible very often will be familiar with Psalm 23. What is it that makes a person want to leave the comfort and monotony of home to come someplace crazy like this and do a medical clinic? Well, let's ask the volunteer doctors and nurses who do it all the time. They look sad and get downhearted, and then they look at you, get make eye contact, and you smile, and they read that smile, and then they start smiling, and then the kids all run to you and they smile. When you really experience that, you just, you would, you're hooked. <laughs> so what do you think? It can't hurt to at least check it out, right? All you need to do is go to our website, JoyceMeyer.org. All the information is there for you. And just think, your adventure may begin today. Well, have you ever wanted to help hurting people? but you feel like you can't make a difference, I want you to know that you can. When we work together, we can feed hungry children, rescue women from human trafficking, and help victims of natural disasters 
Uh, that's just few of the things that we can do. And I'm asking you, if you're not a partner with our ministry, I'm asking you to partner with us, to become a financial partner with the ministry. And that means that you do something on a regular basis, monthly or, or quarterly, but we need people all over the world helping us so we can keep reaching hurting people. And honestly and truly, what each one of us can do by ourselves is minute compared to what we can do if we put it all together. And so I'm inviting you to join the family today and make an amazing difference all over the world for God's glory. You can be a world changer. Ik was echt afhankelijk en was me daar niet van bewust. Ik wist niet eens dat ik zo op zoek was naar goedkeuring. En toch heb ik op de een of andere manier mijn leven lang geprobeerd het anderen naar hun zin te maken. Het lukte me maar niet om de persoon te zijn die anderen wilden dat ik was. En ik heb me altijd druk gemaakt over wat anderen van me denken. Ik snakte naar goedkeuring en ik geloof dat ik dat nog regelmatig doe. Ik geloof niet dat ik ooit echt mezelf was. Maar nu is het anders. In haar nieuwe boek Verslaafd aan goedkeuring laat Joyce Meyer uitgebreid zien hoe jij je zelfbeeld kunt veranderen. Leer jezelf beter kennen en leer te accepteren hoe jij bent als persoon. Bestel nu Verslaafd aan goedkeuring telefonisch op 026 20 22 100 of bezoek onze website joyce-meyer.nl Een dag begint pas goed met een goed ontbijt. En een dagelijkse overdenking van Joyce. Nieuwe impulsen en bemoedigende gedachten die je zullen sterken tijdens je dag. Abonneer je gratis op de overdenkingen op joyce-meyer.nl slash overdenking of op Facebook. Begin je dag goed, het is het waard.